Hey, how's it going, everybody? Ken Westerfeld here again, and uh, I'm going to talk to you today about getting jiggy with it. And uh, here in front of me, I have a number of things. Okay, um, the first thing I have is I have a uh, slice of 40 pound fluorocarbon leader and it's probably four feet long, which is normally uh, a bit longer than what I, I normally go. Um, but for today's demonstration purposes, I felt that having a little extra leader material would probably be advantageous. Um, okay, so the next thing that is very obvious right in front of you all at this moment is um, part of my collection of my favorite blackfish jigs, which are Asylum uh, uh, Asylum Jigs, right? Asylum Jigs, J-I-G-Z, Blackfish Bugs, B-U-G-Z, okay? So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this great little company that I have come to know and love. Um, okay, well, this little brand was started by, uh, a girl named Alyssa Zupa, uh, Z-U-P-P-E, and, uh, her dad, Al, is on Facebook, if you want to get in touch with him, Al Zupa, Z-U-P-P-E, uh, you can order these that way, and, um, she made a great little product right off the bat. Uh, I fell in love with her design. Um, I love the way these jigs sit on the bottom. They're stealthy. They get bites. The hook sizes are right. Um, and she makes them in a number of sizes. Uh, after uh, I spoke to her, originally she was making a lot of larger sizes. And then I expressed my interest and need for some lighter size jigs because um, I do a lot of very fine fishing, uh, sometimes in the Long Island Sound and even in spots where I fish in the ocean, we fish very light. So uh, at that point, she started making, uh, for me, a half ounce and uh, I don't even have... The other I have I have as small as like a third of an ounce which is you know slightly smaller than than this half ounce right here um, she's got a great eye for color they, they come in a variety of, of colors and a variety of sizes up to as far as I know uh, let's say two and a half ounces which uh, I feel that when the point comes that you need a jig heavier than this, then the novelty of the jig is no longer really present. Um, I don't think that a jig at that point is going to outfish a rig. And the reason for that is that if the tide is such that you need that heavy of a jig to hold the bottom, then um, the thing is, the heavier of a jig that you are employing, the more that that blackfish feels the weight of that jig. It holds true for fluke and maybe even stripers. Um, no fish like to feel tension or weight when they pick that bait up and they want to swallow it, they want to eat it, and they want to swim away with it. Um, so at that point, me personally, I'm just going to tie on a rig. I'm just going to fish a rig if I got to go heavier than this right here. Because I don't think that the jig after two and a half ounces is normally going to afford me many more bites than any regular rig would. All right. So with that being said, um, that's uh, I think jigging is mainly a fine presentation and um, and that's how I go about it. I like to fish my jigs primarily on a spinning outfit. I don't like um, 
bait cast uh, reels for this application because bait casters have level wines. And to my experience, uh, you, you know, when you're fishing for blackfish on the bottom, you're fishing in a very <laughs> sticky environment. And your jigs will get hung up in the bottom. And when you're snagged in the bottom and you put all that pressure on that braided line with no stretch, what happens is that braid, that pressure gets transferred to the first contact point, which happens to be that level wind on your reel many times. And personally, I have had my braided line break when I was snagged in the bottom. It broke right at the level wine. So whatever the depth is, 40 feet, 50 feet, 100 feet, if you're fishing that level wine reel and your braid breaks at the level wine, you're out 50 to 100 feet of line. Boom, snap right off your reel. So uh, to me... That doesn't make great sense. Uh, I like the spinning reel, and I have had the the braid break at the uh, at the bail too a couple of times. But um, you know, for this application, I really like the softness and the parabolic bend of the spinning rod blank in the eight to seventeen pound test uh, range of action. I like a very soft rod for this kind of fishing and I find that that softness provides the forgiveness in the fight and the hook set and really assists you in setting the hook in these fish in many ways. Um, they pick the jig up, they begin to swim away, the rod bends with the fish, they're not feeling the tension and the next thing you know, the hook is set in them. Sometimes they set it themselves. And uh, that is ideally the greatest pickup and hit that you can get with a jig. So uh, anyway, without further ado, I'm going to show you how I tie my jigging outfit. All right. So I'm going to start with my, my uh, G3, G4, my whatever knot. <laughs> my my Ken's favorite knot okay so as you see I made a loop and I did three wraps inside the loop three twists around in the loop now I'm going to pull my loop to what to the figure eight there it is okay here's my braided line and normally I fish um, 15 or 20 pound test braided line uh, I can recommend. And the reason for that, it's it's not so much about the strength of the line and so on. It's more about the, the uh, small diameter of the line. The thinner the line, the better that line cuts through the water. Therefore, it allows you to hold the bottom with the lightest possible weight. And for jigging, that is exactly what we want. We want thin line that cuts the water very well, that lets us get away with holding bottom with ridiculously light weight. And uh, that is the whole content, context of the jigging application right there in a nutshell. Um, so... I go in through the top of the figure eight. I come out the bottom of the figure eight. I pull out about, whoopsie, about eight or so inches. I form my horseshoe. I pinch the braid against the leader material. I do eight true wraps down with my braid down the leader material. And I do another eight true wraps back up. Okay. 
And now I do my two half hitches through the horseshoe. One and two. All right. There we go. Now, wet my figure eight. Oopsie. Pull it shut tightly. Okay. And then I'm going to begin to cinch that knot up right to my mono knot, floral knot. And I got to pull the tag and to tighten it all properly of the braid, right? So that's it. That's my finished connection right there. I'm going to take my scissor. I'm going to trim both tag ends off right down to the knot, basically. So there's really not much to hang up on. All right. See how easy that just sliced off, just like butter. I didn't even have to close the blade of the scissor. All right, so that is my braid to mono connection, right? So next, we're going to choose which pretty asylum jig we're going to use. And um, I don't know where I'll be fishing next, but I'll tell you what. I have a suspicion um, I might even have. Uh, yes, I do. Okay. I've already got an unpackaged 2.5 ounce in glow, and I'm going to be fishing really deep, okay? So, I'm going to tie my uh, loop knot connection to my jig, all right? And how I do that is I cross the leader over itself once right i put it through once so i made just like a, a half hitch one half hitch right single half hitch i'm gonna pull that down make it fairly small and now i'm gonna run my tag end of my leader through the eye of the jig right to that loop okay now I'm going to do four twists. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to take my tag in and I'm going to go through both loops that I just made, making sure that it goes through the original half hitch loop. And I'm going to pull that tight. I'm going to wet it. All right? Where's my tag? get this right I usually do this all with my my teeth which is a terrible bad habit but. so um, when you tie your loop knot right a lot of times the back end will still be a little bit on the loose side and you can just slide that down pack it down on the knot with your with your fingers and that works fine give another tug on the tag make sure it's cinched down tight all snug and trim the tag and there you have it you're ready to fish now the advantage to using the loop knot is right here okay watch so I've got a little bit of tension on my leader right I'm, I'm lifting up on my rod now let's say the fish is eating here the baits gonna be here on the hook right as I lift the hook stays there on the ground right where the fish is eating he doesn't feel that he doesn't feel that at all so when you're ready to set up on him boop you got him and uh that was taught to me by uh john knight over at uh, title tales and uh, a couple of my friends had been using this knot uh, before I started employing it and these guys all made a believer out of me um 
I always caught fish, even connecting with an improved clinch knot. And I still think sometimes an improved clinch knot is good if you're pitching the jig around and you're not fishing straight up and down. But if you are fishing basically straight up and down, this is the way to go. Look at that. I mean, you know, physically you can envision what's happening and uh, it, it doesn't, it can't possibly make more sense than that right there. Okay, folks, so uh, thanks for watching. This has been a Jigging Tog 101 with Ken Westerfeld, and uh, hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.